Hi, my name is David Steele. I'm a product manager at Arcturus. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the UC MK60 VOIP board and module. The UC MK60 is suitable for various VOIP applications, including intercoms, speaker phones, handsets, as well as IP audio distribution, such as PA paging, mass notification, or IP speakers. Uh, in addition to basic audio processing functions, the system also supports audio intelligibility and psychoacoustic enhancements, which include things like uh, acoustic echo cancellation, noise reduction, auto gain control, and others. The UCMK60 is built using a Freescale Kinetis K60 ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller with internal flash and RAM. This means that all of the middleware code executes internal to the MCU and there's no requirement for external memory components. Uh, the MCU comes preloaded with the VoIP middleware as well as the Embark's M2M middleware. The VoIP middleware takes care of the SIP signaling, RTP media, and audio encode and decode functions, while the M2M firmware takes care of configuration, maintenance, and operational functions. And we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, because the middleware is highly optimized to run on an MCU, the boot time is very fast when compared to other systems that would be running something like embedded Linux. From a cold start, the system is ready to place a call in slightly under six seconds, which makes it suitable for wake-up or wake-on-demand applications, which could be things like solar-powered devices. Uh, so when you order a development kit from us, you'll receive a, a box that looks very much like this. Uh, why don't I open it up and I'll show you what, uh, what comes with the kit. The first thing you'll find is a product registration card. This contains a code which you'll need when you're registering your product to get access to the dedicated support site. That site contains all of the documentation, uh, firmware, examples, how-tos, and tutorials. So you'll need to really uh, make use of the product. Uh, the kit also contains a headset, power supply cable, serial cable, ethernet cable, and uh, a power supply as well. And uh, the, also the UC MK60 board itself. So let me just uh, clear a little bit of room here and we can uh, have a look at the, uh, the hardware. So this is the UC MK60 System Solutions Board. It's a superset part that contains all the connectors and optional components. You can use this for development from MCU, module, or board application. This section right here, surrounded by these two 60-pin header connectors, is the module subset. You can see the microcontroller here, the audio subsystem, the network phi and transformer. This section here is the extended module, and that includes the PoE subsection, as well as the Class D amplifier for direct connection to speakers. Uh, there are also a number of uh, push buttons down the side for inputs, LEDs for outputs. We have the 3.5 millimeter uh, audio terminations for line and mic level inputs and outputs. The two uh, terminal strips here for power speaker output. We've got 12 volt DC power input. We've got Ethernet, serial, and also SD card. If I uh, flip that over, we can see on the back we've got uh, a battery holder here for the real time clock backup. And we've also got some components for IO isolation, including transient voltage suppression. So uh, I've pre-configured a few things already. I've got my Ethernet and my power set up. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and connect, uh, connect this device to my uh, little micro network here and explain what I've got uh, set up. So I'll just power that up. And as you can see, we've got uh, power, and we can see the network light is blinking. And then we'll get some status LEDs down here as well. And uh, basically, what I've got uh, set up on my network is a very simple you know, isolated micro network. I've just got a standard uh, gateway over here. It's serving DHCP to my IP phone, to my laptop and to the UCMK60. My laptop has a couple of pieces of software on it that I've already uh, pre-installed. One is a stateless, very simple SIP server, which you can download freely. And we've got a tutorial on how to set that up in the, in the support site. And the other component of software is the Embark System Manager. Now, the System Manager detects UCMK60 devices in the network. And it does that because the, M2, and the Embark's M2M stack in the UCMK60 middleware broadcasts a service discovery announcement that's then detected by the System Manager tool. And then once that's detected, it allows me to connect directly to the device. And I can do things like uh, configure it. So I could set up my SIP account settings, or I could change the administrative settings or network settings, typical things you do during configuration. So why don't we? Uh, jump into my laptop point of view and I can show you the system manager and we'll set up a quick uh, push to call demo. 
Okay, I've opened the System Manager application, and as you can see in the home panel, it has detected the UCMK60. This is the device name, the operational mode that it's running in, the MAC address, the IP address, and its uh, current status. System Manager gets this information from the service discovery announcement that's made by the Embark's M2M middleware stack on the UCMK60. If there were many devices on my network, it would detect all of them and it would display them in this, in this home panel window, making it really easy for me to see my site-wide system. System Manager itself supports various maintenance and configuration tasks. It supports remote resets, factory resets, firmware upgrades, configuration and configuration templates. And it also has an internal firmware repository that allows you to drag and drop .embark's firmware files directly into it. You can also select multiple devices at the same time, meaning that you can bulk deploy uh, configuration files or deploy firmware updates entire across an entire system with only a few clicks. To configure the UCMK60, all I'm going to do is just a double click on the device in the home panel. And this is going to bring up a tab this is the uh, information tab. It contains the basic information about the device. We can see the MAC address, IP address, the device name, device type, operational mode, serial number, and firmware version. Under the network settings tab, uh, it allows us to choose the way that we're obtaining an IP address, either dynamic or via static address. We're going to set it up for dynamic. Uh, and there's also some fallback options uh, should a DHCP server not be available. For example, in the condition where there's a power failure event, it may take longer for your DHCP server to come up than it will take for the device to come up. So you've got options to fall back to static IP address or last known IP address, and that will still allow you to get access to the device uh, should you need it because it will provide the network interface with an IP address. And then, after 120 seconds, you can choose to reboot the device, and then it will try DHCP again and hopefully obtain a proper DHCP lease from the server at that point. There's also the provision for remote syslog server, so it will forward all of the syslog information to a remote server, an NTP server, and also a ping timer, which is a network heuristic that can go off and obtain a response from a remote server and uh, check some level of uh, connectivity. I'm just going to jump over to the audio tab now. The audio tab allows you to select the type of input source that you're using. In this case, we're going to use mic left. Uh, it also ch allows you to choose the boost gains, uh, as well as some of the uh, audio intelligibility and psychoacoustic enhancements, including the acoustic echo canceller and noise reduction, and then a master output as well. The final tab, which is the control tab, we'll get into in a little bit more detail uh, in another video. This shows some of the enhanced uh, control functions that the M2M, uh, the Embark's M2M interface can support, uh, and also a cool little feature, which is our uh, DTMF and external door lock signal. But we'll get into that into a, a separate video. So I'm just going to jump back a couple of tabs here now. So the VoIP tab allows me to choose which calling mode I'm going to be using. In this case, I'm going to use infrastructure mode, which means that I'm going to register with a SIP server. There's also peer-to-peer -peer mode, which means that you don't need any infrastructure and you can call between devices directly in a peer-to-peer -peer way. Uh, since I have a server set up, I'm going to enter my SIP account information that I've already got set up on that server. So my account is 3001, password is 3001, my call ID will just make 3001 as well and the uh, IP address of the server is 10.0.0.114. And then I'm going to configure a PTC, so that stands for push to call, and I'm going to configure that with the number of my IP phone, the extension of my IP phone, which in this case is 3010. Now you should note that uh, the push to call is actually an input signal directly into the MCU that's connected up on the dev board to uh, a push button, so in this case push button switch number one. So when I press this, what it's going to do is it's going to try to place a call to extension 3010. There are up to 10 push to call, unique push to call numbers that you can use either in peer to peer uh, mode or in SIP infrastructure mode. The only difference in peer to peer mode is that you need to add the full SIP URI, so you'd use 3010 at and then IP address uh, to be able to, to connect to it. So that allows you to handle small uh, network configurations such as uh, interco small intercom systems really without any additional infrastructure. I'm now going to go ahead and press apply. It's going to save this configuration information and then it's going to quickly reboot. And I'm going to just look over at my board and 
and there we go. It's uh, I can see that my output uh, number one uh, LED is now on. That means it's registered with my my server and ready to place a call. Right now that we've got everything configured, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy headset here. I'm going to uh, connect it to the board so the speaker and the headset is going to uh, go into the HP, the headphones, the HP jack. Then I'm going to connect the microphone to mic L input. And I've already configured the uh, first speed dial to go to, uh, to be assigned to SW1, which is SW1 in the board. So when I press that, it's going to hopefully call my IP phone. There we go. Then I'm just going to put this on speaker and mute it quickly. And uh, you should be able to hear my uh, voice uh, coming out of that phone. I'm just going to hang it up. And uh, that's how you set up and configure the push to call demo using the UC MK60 and the system manager tool. I hope you found this video informative. And uh, for more information, please do check out ArcturusNetworks.com. We look forward to uh, helping you with your next application. Thank you very much for joining me today.